everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book haul. These are all the books that I got in August, I believe it is. And then we also have... No. Three, two... Hello everybody, E here. I got a package and an entire book haul for you. But we are going to start with the uh, the package first, and then we are going to jump right into August's book haul. So this one is a gift from uh, my friend Terry, and we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it, because we're going to be here for a while. So grab some snacks, kick back, and relax, because I got 60 plus books to unhaul. The first one is... Wow. Okay, I didn't expect this to, to be as big as it is, but this is... Anne Rice's Taltos. Yeah, I can hear it now. But hey, I thought you didn't like Anne Rice. I don't like Anne Rice. But um, I am willing to give her stuff a try. And my friend, well, Terry, uh, she found, she sent me pictures of a book uh, sale she was at. And they had Taltos and Lasher for decent prices. So I got both of these. And they are the big version, Joe. They are the biggins. Um, there's more coming, but I am so OCD about book hauls and things like that. I have to I have to get uh, the the books that I got in August, even if it's like September 1st or 2nd. Um, I have to get those books in the next book haul. Plus, this video is going to be long as all get out, so we got to do we we got to make sure we we streamline some of this stuff. So yeah, these are not the only Anne Rice books um, I'm going to be unhauling today. So we're going to put these back here. I'm going to set up um, stacks. I'm going to put this up here. Okay, so the the. We're probably going to jump around a little bit because I have, like I said, I have stacks upon stacks over here. Um, one of my biggest finds we're going to start with, uh, I finally found, and this is upsetting because I actually got it the day after I shot the video, I finally found a physical copy, a paperback of Clive Barker's Books of Blood, Volume 1. Uh, me and Cammie's Corner are going to be doing a series based on uh, Clive Barker's work in chronological order that should be coming in October, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know we're going to be splitting up the Books of Blood. Books of... Yeah, Books of Blood. We're going to be splitting up all the stories in, the, in there, and I'm excited for that content. But in the meantime, I am currently building up my Clive Barker collection and I hadn't found any in thrift stores for a long time and then all of a sudden I found a whole load of them. If you remember last month's haul I got Books of Blood Volume 2. This time I got Cold Heart Canyon. Uh, this was 50 cents at the thrift store. This was a quarter and so are the rest of the, uh, the Clive Barker books I'm going to show you. But this one says To Big Bro Tie uh, Somebody and Clive Barker. So this one is signed. This was a quarter at the library, y'all. So it's got Clive Barker's signature in it. Um, another one I got. I got all four of these. I got... Let's see here. We'll do it over here. I got Everville. I already have the Great and Secret Show. I'm going to put these over here since these jokers are so, so heavy. I got Sacrament. It's another first edition hardcover for a quarter. And then I got, this one has been well, well loved, a Magica. There's another one that was a quarter. With these uh, Clive Barker books, what happened is I went over to the library and they have the books out that are a quarter a piece up on the shelving, but their overstock, their overstock is usually kept, kept in the back room. Well, today they just happen to have the back room door open and I saw all the books back there through through the door into their back room. And I was like, hey, lady, are those books for sale? Are they going to be for sale? And she's like, yeah, they are. I was like, give me all the Clive Barker. Anyways, so another one that was back there with the Clive Barker was Wiley Cash's The Last Ballad. I grabbed that one, too. It's the first edition hardcover. It's in pretty good condition. Um... <laughs> It's got some stickers on the back of it that I think are going to be really easy to take off. Yeah, it's the like the Books, Books a Million kind of sticker. Uh, 
but yeah, so I have another one. His other book that I have of his is uh, This Dark Road to Mercy. Um, I'm not sure which one I'll get to first. If you guys have any opinions on which one I should get to first, let me know. This one I picked up just because it, it looked decent. Um, this is by R.N. Morris, The Gentle Axe, a novel. Um, I have no idea what this book is about. Let's, t let's take a peek. Uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, 1866. Police investigator Porf Porfiry Petrovich faces his most challenging murder case since the events made famous by Mr. Dostoevsky in his novel Crime and Punishment, a case with disturbing parallels and even darker implications. I have not read anything by Dostoevsky. Do I don't you know how to pronounce it for real. Uh, but yeah, this one looked in is damn good condition. If nothing else, it'll, it'll end up being resold. So, there's that. Then this one, um, I was asking for uh, standalone fantasy novels or weird novels, that kind of thing. And someone mentioned The Children of Men by uh, P.D. James. Is that right? Anyways, I think this is a book about a world populated entirely by men, um, which should be interesting because I read The Power by Naomi Alderman, I think it was, which was... Uh, Basically, the flipping of if if women had if women had the, uh, the instead of a patriarchy we had a matriarchy kind of deal. Um, they had superpowers and basically kept treated men like you know men treat women that kind of deal. Uh, but this one seems like the exact opposite of that, and I am I I am really interested in checking it out because it supposes I guess that men can have kids in this. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh yeah. So wait a second. Is it a Oh, it's a her. P.D. James is a her. Uh, the year is 2021 and the human race... <laughs> 2021. And the human race is, quite literally, coming to an end. Since 1995, no babies have been born, because in that year, all males unexpectedly became infertile. Oh, I'm not going to read anymore. That sounds interesting. That sounds much different from what I thought it was going to be. So we're going to put that one over there. Next up is a gift that was sent to me um, by my buddy George, or Book Monster, on Twitter. Um, or Shh, I'm Reading, I think is his name, but he goes by Book Monster mostly. Um, I didn't know who had sent it. He had he bought it from somebody and had them send it to me. But that's Sabbath's Theater by uh, Philip Roth. That's a very nice cover. Uh, so if you guys were wondering who Louis, Louis or Louis was, yeah, that's, it, it wasn't Louis at all. That was just the person who was selling it. Um, we'll get to these at the end. I'm also going to be doing, I'm going to tell you right now for the people who hang around, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm going to show you a total of five books that I'm going to be giving away. Um, and if you can name all five books that I pop up with, you will get at least one of them. So there's chance, five chances to win. Okay, five chances. And the first one is Thinner by Richard Bachman. I found a really good uh, book club edition of this one. It's a hardcover. Um, if anybody's interested in it, this is the first one of the giveaway. So that's number one on the giveaway list. Uh, it, it, pay, it pays off to hang around this time. Next up, we have Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles, this little hardcover edition. It's a library copy I found for a quarter. But uh, I have a paperback copy of this. Uh, my family's probably going to try and read it all together. Um, this is a, it says it's a first edition, but who knows how old it actually is. Um, it looks like this one might be from 1997 because uh, it's the introduction is written by Bradbury in 97. So this edition probably is a from around that time frame. Put this one up here. Next up, uh, we're going to get into the, some of the stuff I got at Second and Charles. If you watch my walkie-talkie, you'll know at the end of that one, um, we, I talked about going to Second and Charles. We got there, they were shorthanded. We ended up having to walk around for two and a half hours uh, while they did all the checking in of the books that I brought. But one of the books that I got was Stranded by Bracken McLeod. It becomes uh, highly recommended by the horror community. Um, I'm interested in I've never finished anything um, by, um, by McLeod. Um, not because he's bad, it's just because I wasn't in the mood for his his stuff right then. I'm going to put this one back here. Uh, next up, we have one that I already read and reviewed, which is the Saturday Night Ghost Club by uh, Craig Davidson, who is the pin name for... Well, no. I think this is his real name. Um, his other pin names are Patrick Lestuski, I think it is, uh, writes indie horror, and then another... Uh, Name is Nick Cutter. He wrote The Troop, Little Heaven, and uh, The Acolyte, and The Deep, I believe. So let's put that over there. 
uh, next up, I finally got found a copy of this. So if anybody out there was planning on getting it, don't get it for me. I finally found Casino Royale by Ian Fleming, and I'll be starting this probably in November. I'll be starting my James Bond read-through. But yeah, I found a, a damn, almost brand new copy for three bucks at Second and Charles. All right, next up, another one I found at Second and Charles. People have been recommending this book forever. Fantastic Land by Mike uh, Bakovin. Bakovin? Bakovin? Oh. Bakovin? Okay, whatever. This is kind of like a World War Z, but uh, instead of uh, zombie apocalypse, it is uh, kind of like a Lord of the Flies retelling. People stuck in a, a theme park, something like that. Like a, not a carnival, but yeah, Fantastic Land. So uh, that, that's what this one's about. Um, since the 1970s, Fantastic Land has been the theme park where fun is guaranteed. But when a hurricane ravages, that's what gets them trapped. The, when a hurricane ravages the Florida coast and isolates the park, the employees find it anything but fun. Five weeks later, the authorities who rescue the survivors encounter a scene of horror. Photos soon emerge online of heads on spikes outside of rides and viscera and human bones littering the gift shops. Breaking records for hits, views, likes, clicks, and shares. How could a group of survivors, mostly teenagers, commit such terrible acts? Bruh, I'm all in for that one. That one's going... That, that's going to be a soon... It's going to be a soon read, probably in September. Next up, uh, another one that I've already read and reviewed was Nickel Boys. Uh, by the way, I got Saturday Night Ghost Club and this one. I bought them brand new on Amazon. Uh, the Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead, fantastic book, instant classic in my opinion. Um, but yeah, check out my review of that one if you want to hear more about that. Um, next up, we have another one, yet another one. This one's getting some more traction recently, and I know my buddy uh, Stephanie over at That's What She Read, I know she loves this book, it, it comes highly recommended. Um, even though she is a Paul Tremblay fan, we will not hold that against her. I'm kidding, Steph. But uh, The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnop. Um, I've heard great things about the horror in this one. Uh, a mounting sense of dread. Um, very, very good from what I understand. But yeah, so uh, if, if you've read this one, I'd love to hear some other opinions because I've heard a couple of opinions from people I trust, but I also heard from someone that I have the exact opposite taste of. They loved it, and I'm kind of worried about that. So let me know whether or not you liked it. Without any spoilers, let me know why. Um, Next up, we have another one I bought brand new also, came as a recommendation of a lot of research. The reason why I got this is I put up a thing on Twitter, I was like, I need standalone fantasy novels. Um, doesn't matter how long they are, the bigger the better though. I want standalone fantasy, no hinting at continuations, no uh, hinting at series, none of that stuff. Um, no, there might be a novella coming soon, or there might be, I, I want a standalone one and done fantasy novel, and out of all the people that I talked to, over probably 50 people, I finally settled on The Winter Road by Adrian Selby because the, uh, the description spoke to me and it came so highly recommended. There were some other ones that came highly recommended too, but the more research I did, the more it seemed like either it was part of a world that I really need to read other books from, or so, especially Joe Abercrombie. People were like, this book stands alone, but most people came back and said, hey, you really need to read the rest of the, the books in this world. So this one, the Empire will be born in spring, but it is forged in vicious winter. The Circle, a thousand miles of perilous for forests and warring clans. No one has ever tamed such treacherous territory before, but ex-soldier Thierre Amundsen, veteran of a hundred battles is determined to try. With a merchant caravan protected by a crew of skilled mercenaries, Tear, I guess it's Tear, uh, embarks on a dangerous mission to forge a road across the untamed wilderness that was once her home. But a warlord has risen in the wilds of the Circle, uniting its clans and terrorizing its people. Tear's battles are far from over. Yeah, so I grabbed this one. Um, I like that kind of story where people go on a journey, you know, and kick ass along the way, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Another reason why I'm looking for standalone fantasy novels is because I have a 400,000 word uh, grim dark fantasy book, and I just not I'm just not sure if it's any good. Um, I want to read some standalone stuff, but the, the book's going to be a thousand page standalone epic uh, uh, horror slash grim dark uh, fantasy novel that may never see the light of day. Patreon, my Patreon subscribers 
are going to be getting it, but I'm not sure about the rest of everybody else. A time for another giveaway book. Remember, you have to be able to name all five books that, uh, that pop up in this video. Um, in fact, we might have to do it, you might have to DM me. So, at this point, you're going to either have to DM me on YouTube or DM me on uh, Twitter or Instagram to get in on this, okay? So, the next one is Richard Bachman's The Regulators, if you want to win this one. It's another first edition. Well, the, the thinner wasn't the first edition, but it was, um, but it was a hardback. So, this Bachman. Alright, so back to the book haul. I finally got, um, you will see a review for The Crying of Lot 49 sometime this week. In fact, it might already be up on Monday. I'm not sure. But uh, Thomas Pynchon's Mason and Dixon. Um, this is a whole brick of a book, man. Look at, look at, look at that sucker. Um, it's like 800, it's 700 and, but these are hardcover pages, 760 some odd pages. But uh, yeah, I'm collecting Pynchon. I have The Bleeding Edge. I have uh, Inherent Vice, The Crying of Lot 49, uh, let's see here, and Gravity's Rainbow. I'm still looking for V and some other ones. If you have a, a line on some Thomas Pynchon that I haven't mentioned, I would love to, to hook up with you and uh, you may get a copy for myself. So if, if you would, if you're willing to get rid of any Pynchon. All right, next up are some gifts I just got. Uh, it is uh, The Witches by Roald Dahl. My friend Jessica, who I read... Uh, who I read the the Nickel Boys with, uh, she saw that I loved uh, the Phantom Toll Booth and decided to send me some middle grade stuff. So I got The Witches by Roald Dahl and The House with a Clock in Its Walls. I'm really looking forward to this one because the movie looked good. We never watched it, but uh, the movie looks good, and I definitely want to give this one a try. Jack Black was in it, and whatever her her name is, I can I'm, never remember her name. We're probably also you can, if you're seeing me check the time here after a while it's because I need to make sure I only have 10 minutes of uh, data left before not data I have 10 minutes left on the card um, another another one and we're probably gonna have to stop and start over not start over again but you'll see a cut uh, Roll Dolls Matilda I got for a quarter so I plan on binging his stuff I also have the fantastic Mr. Fox or the fabulous Mr. Fox I can't remember which and of course all the Charlie and the uh, Ch Chocolate Factory um, books. We have all those. So there's that one. And then I got, this is another quarter buy at the library. I got The Scarlet Letter. I will try and read it eventually. I didn't realize how short it was, so when I saw it, I was like, eh, I'll give it a shot. I remember trying to read it in high school, but it's another one of those books that I just didn't speak to me, and I ended up putting down. Um, Alright, next up, this is going to be a try read. Uh, mainly I got it to sell it because it is in such good condition other than the sticker needs to come off. But that is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Um, I know there's a movie based on this. Uh, I have not seen the movie, not even interested in the movie. I am interested in reading outside of my comfort zone. So I'm going to try this one out. Maybe, maybe not, who knows. I'm not guaranteeing that I will be finishing it. Have you read this one? Have you read Crazy Rich Asians? Let me know if there's anything in there that you think I might like. Next up, I have uh, another copy of Jonathan Franzen's The Corrections. This one's literally for sale. Um, I have another copy that's the exact same quality as this one. So I'll be putting that up either on eBay or it'll be for sale up on Twitter. But yeah, there's that one. And then I have, I got hardcovers of... Catching Fire and Mockingjay. I have the Hunger Games in hardcover also, but um, I'm reading these for research for my uh, my News Firm trilogy, which again is all going to be on Patreon. That's going to be Slasher Live, Thrill Kill, and Snuff TV. Those three books I'm calling the News Firm trilogy, uh, but all those will be up over the next course of the next five years over on Patreon. Um, next, we have. And this is something that I found for a quarter at the library. Uh, you'll see that I have a, a repeat of this here in a minute. But uh, Mem Memnock, Memnock the Devil by Anne Rice. This is a first edition hardcover, which will probably end up getting sold. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump into all the Anne Rice stuff. Get that out of the way. I, all these were a quarter. So I have The Mummy or Ramsey the Dead. At that one. Let me move Bradbury over there. Let's have a whole line of Anne Rice. Alright, Lestat the Vampire. The 
Queen of the Damned. I think I even have these in order. Interview with the Vampire and the First Witch's Book are on their way, too. Thank you, Terry, by the way. So that is that. And then uh, The Tale of the Body Thief. And then we have and then Not the Devil, again. So I think I only need book six to complete this. Uh, unless I'm going to go with the... Uh, Unless I'm going to go with the, uh, what's it called, um, uh, to can you continue on, the one about, uh, Atlantis, Prince Lestat and the Lost City of Atlantis, something like that, I'm not sure. Um, I got another copy of, of Mice and Men, this is my third copy of it, uh, it's a quarter, I usually resell these, um, I have a very, very nice edition, this one might just be better though, so I got another copy of Mice and Men. I finally have a physical copy of Lord of the Flies. I'm going to try rereading it. I didn't care too much for it. I only gave it three stars uh, with the ebook copy. But uh, I'm going to give it a try here in a paperback at some point in time. I forgot how ridiculously short this book is. It's a very small version of the book. Uh, it's like handheld size and it's only 206 pages. Got another Steinbeck. Finally got East of Eden. I have this one on audiobook. I've never owned a physical copy. East of Eden. And then this one, I have uh, Philip Margolin's The Sun, I think it's called, but this one looked interesting to me. Worthy Brown's Daughter. I'm going to try and get into some more Western stuff, too. I'm just trying to broaden my horizons. Um, mu much of the reason that I'm planning on doing this is because I want to write outside of my comfort zone also, and maybe, maybe I have a Western novel in it. Now, for the third book that you could possibly win, again, do not list these down below. You're going to have to DM me, uh, message me either on YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram. Horns. I will clean up this coffee. This is the first edition, but it was on clearance. Um, first edition of Joe Hill's Horns. Okay, That's another one you can read. Again, you're going to have to list all five of these books. Okay, getting back into it. Sorry for the cut, but I ran out of time on my, my card. Um, this one's going to be for sale, so if anybody's interested in it, this is Michael McDowell's. This is book four in Blackwater Chronicles. It's called The War. Um, I have no interest in collecting these or reading them, so if I ever do read it, it'll be probably be in one big... I'm, I'm not going to go hunting for them, uh, because once I fall down that rabbit hole, man, I'll, I'll never come out of it. But this is uh, book four. If you need book four in the Blackwater Chronicles, there you go. Uh, this is another one that's going to be for sale once I get it cleaned up. This is Haunted Homeland by Michael Norman. I had Haunted Heartland. I'm not sure if it's the same author or not, but I sold that one on Twitter. You got that one. Uh, next, we have... i um, trying to keep some kind of... Uh, da -da 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 -da, some kind of... flow to this. I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. So... I'm going to take these. Um, I have by, uh, this is James Lee Burke's uh, Heaven's Prisoner. This one was up at the thrift store forever, for a quarter. And I never picked it up because it's a movie tie-in edition, but I can't find another. I wanted the audiobook because I've been doing this series in the audiobook, and I completely missed the second one because the second one's not available in the audiobook. So that's the second of his, uh, I can't remember the, the guy's name, the... Uh, the, the detective's name. Robichaud? David Robichaud. Uh, this one is Lewis Dunk Lois Duncan's Killing Mr. Griffin. If you don't know, uh, Duncan wrote I Know What You Did Last Summer or something along those lines. I'm not sure if it's the same, co the same cost. I'm not sure if it's the same uh, title uh, in book form as it was in the movie, but yeah. So this, look, look at, look at the, the teenagers on the back, man. This is great. Great stuff. But uh, yeah, it was only a quarter, so I picked it up. Um, next up, real quick, let me throw this out here. Uh, Dean Kuhn stuff I didn't have. Dark Rivers of the Heart. I had to pick that one up. Uh, these were all a quarter. Forever Odd, book two in the Odd Thomas, and then Brother Odd, which is book three. Brother Odd wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, let me get that one out, that stuff out of the way. Um, yeah, I'll do this. If you don't know, um, I collect John D. McDonald books, and I'll be doing a showcase for those, uh, my Unexpected Collection series. But Nightmare in Pink, I grabbed this one. It's uh, all of his Travis McGee books is what I have. Um, there's that one. And then another one is the Event Horizon 
novelization, which I was surprised to find at, uh, it was only like a dollar sixty-five at Second and Charles. I was blown away because it's insanely hard to find. Um, next up, we have Wicked by Gregory Maguire, and I found the sequel, Son of a Witch. So I got both of these. I'm a huge fan of the Wizard of Oz storyline. I never tried these, but I'm going to give them a shot um, for a quarter apiece. I couldn't pass it up. Um, next up, I have two Jonathan Kellerman novels. This one I bought, it was a cover by, it's the, the Butcher's Theater. See that? Yeah. But that cover, man, I love, I love covers like that. And then I also semi-collect uh, Kellerman paperbacks. I've liked some of his stuff, and uh, I wouldn't mind having them on hand if I wanted to jump into a good thriller. This one's The Devil's Waltz, or just Devil's Waltz, not The... So yeah, some Kellermans. Alright, uh, then we have, if you remember last last month, it's down there on the floor, I don't want to go pick it up. I picked up Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, thinking it was The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Well, this time, I finally found The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. So I got this one for a, uh, at the library for a quarter. And then this one was a, was a cover by also, kind of like a paperback from hell kind of deal, but The Grange. I don't know if you can see that. There's a, like a castle going on up here. It's really cool, I thought. And an orange moon or a blood moon. And it's got, uh, it's got a hole punched into it, which means that Tor probably never got paid for this book. I think that's what they do with uh, discarded copies. I can't remember. But, uh, what is this? This is a piece of book cut out and taped in here. It says... Alas, my love, ye do me wrong to cast me off discourteously, and I have loved you so long, delighting in your company. Green sleeves was all my joy, green sleeves was my delight, green sleeves was my heart of gold, and who but my lady green sleeves? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so fifth, fifth book for the giveaway. No, fourth, fourth book is a kind of ratty copy of Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This is the first edition, but it is worn on the cover. The cover is not in great condition. So, uh, yeah, so this is the fourth one. Once again, you have to DM me. Uh, all comments down there in the, in the doobly-doo will get deleted because I don't want to give it away. But Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. All right, next up, we have, I think it's the last two books. If I, yeah, unless I break down, yeah, I also got the, uh, I don't want to go get it right now, but I also got the Joe Hills uh, limited edition of Horns, so um, if you, if you're interested in that one, there's a whole video on it, but it's up there on my shelf, I don't want to pull it down and disturb anything, but uh, my buddy uh, Slan, uh, he, you'll find him in chat on the nights that I do the live streams, he told me that I absolutely have to read Tim Powers' Declare, so here it is. I got it. When I will get to it, I have no idea. Um, it sounds pretty amazing. Um, as a young double agent infiltrating the Soviet spy network in Nazi-occupied Paris, Andrew Hale finds himself caught up in a secret even more ruthless than war. Even more, oh, Cal even more ruthless. Hang on. Andrew Hale finds himself caught up in a secret even more ruthless war. Okay. Uh, two decades later, in 1963, he will be forced to confront again the nightmare that has haunted his adult life, a lethal, unfinished operation codenamed Declare. From the corridors of Whitehall to the Arabian Desert, from post-war Berlin to the streets of Cold War Moscow, Hale's desperate quest draws him into international politics and gritty espionage tradecraft. That would be the only thing that puts me off. I'm not big on, like, spy thrillers. And inexorably drives Hale, the fiery and beautiful communist agent Alina Teresa Seniza Bendinga, whatever, and Kim Philby, mysterious traitor to the British cause, to a deadly confrontation on the high glaciers of Mount Ararat in the very shadow of the fabulous and perilous Ark. Arctic Covenant, I guess? Okay. Um, it sounds interesting, but the thing that's got me shook is that spy thriller kind of thing. Um, it's 590 pages, man, so I'm not sure when I'll get to it, but it's, it's definitely on my read to try and get done with it within a year's time. Um, so I'm not sure, dude. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see about it. And last, 
but certainly not least, this is a fantastic, amazing gift from my friend Slan. He sent me Stephen King's The Stand, the original cut edition. I always want to say uncut. The original cut edition of the book. And that cover is something else, man. It's very weird. Almost looks like uh, like an indigenous tribe kind of person with a, which is funny considering how the book ends. Um, and that cross and it's it's a very gnarly looking cover. But uh yeah, this is so good. Let me look over my stuff one more time before I show the last book. I think I got everything. But uh once again, if you have made it this far and you want to know uh all five books, you're going to ha well if you know all five books, which I'm going to show the fifth one right here. Um, but if you know the books, send me a DM on Instagram or on Twitter or on YouTube. Do not make the, com the, the comment public down below. But the fifth and final book that I am giving away is a first edition copy of The Fireman by Joe Hill. And of course I'm not going to tell you what the other books are because I want to make sure that you saw every single one of them where they're supposed to be. But yeah, uh, to wrap this up, I say this every single week. I'm going to say it again. Well, not every single week. Every single month. Book hauls are my favorite content on this platform, on BookTube. So if you have a book haul, please link me down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, if you link me and it doesn't show up right away, the spam filter might have caught it. So please give me some time. Um, I will eventually approve it. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to go through all that trouble of making a video, please just list everything that you got from last month in August down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been a massive August book haul. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!